Hey, YouTubers. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not sure. I, I really didn't want to do this video, kind of. And then I decided I'm going to do this video. Um, I wouldn't consider myself a knife snob, but I, I traditionally, I just, this is not my thing. Um, I mean, budget knives, okay? Budget knives like that. And this little son of a gun here, whatever the hell this was, I got in the mail the other day that I've been messing with. Come here. Come out of here, you son of a... This one, this... End land. So, boom, I, 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 I title it for this, then I show you an end land. But in any case, el one I, I Just some viewers have been talking about this, so I had to get one. We'll do another one on that, another video on this. Okay, so I didn't order this. I got this... Mm, as an add-in, as kind of a freebie. I got, if you look at my video on the ZT0888 clone, then you will see this knife, I think, in that video as an incidental that came when I bought that ZT clone. I bought the ZT clone. It was in pretty good shape. It was in good used condition. I mean, there were a couple of snail trails on the tie and everything. So the guy sold it to me for 60 bucks because he didn't know what he had. And it was missing a detent ball, which I ordered and I put in. So I fixed it all, took it apart, fixed it up, worked like a champ, sold it again on eBay for a whole bunch more money than the 60 bucks. And this just came in the package. Uh, so it was really funny. Look at the way the ad was. It was two Chinese clones, and that's what. He didn't say Sanren Mu, he didn't say ZT clone, nothing. And it, so I, I was, got it for 61 bucks free shipping. In any case, so this came along with it. So I thought, eh, eh, you know, it's okay. You know, whatever. Whether he included it or not really didn't make any difference to me. And uh, God, I hate to say this. I almost am ashamed to say this. I like this knife. <laughs> Shit. God forgive me, but I like this knife. Isn't that horrible? Oh my God. You guys are just going to unsubscribe to my channel because I like a $12 knife. I swear to God, I didn't mean to like this knife. I don't want to like this knife. I want to hate this knife. Let me tell you about this knife. Ever since it came in, I just chucked it on my uh, end table near my chair that I sit in when I watch TV. And, you know, when I get the mail and stuff, get off of there. I'm spitting on it. That's how much I hate it. Okay, so, end table. So, I get the mail, I drag it in, I sit down, I go through the mail. Guess what I used to open it with? The mail with. I've used this knife <laughs> in the last couple of weeks since I've had that clown. More than I've used any other knife. Any other knife that I own. So it's like, oh, well, you got all these fancy knives, right? I mean, you got uh, those CH knives, the MG knives. You got the freaking uh, Hogue X5. You got all these knives. Which one do you actually use? How pathetic. How pathetic is that? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But it actually cuts really, really well. Uh-oh, uh-oh comes a paper cutting and I have used this knife and it is still very sharp it's like a little box cutter it's like a little yeah that's what it is it's like a box cutter look at the design here look at the way they've uh, ground these angles into this blade it is like a little box cutter knife you know that where the blade pops out well, kind of uh, kind of a modified Tonto tip but I'll tell you what this tip here, right here, that is sharp right there. On the back side here, no. But right as they bevel down here, this all is sharp. I mean, it's a champ at opening boxes and envelopes and stuff, cutting through tape. Great little, you see the little edge right there shining? Uh, yeah, it's really well uh, sharpened out of the box. There's your uh, your logo. 
Okay. So, I mean, this was a throw-in. Your designer, Leong Gong. 7046 LTE-LKR. And there's 7046s. There are some that are green. There's some that are don't have this like this brass liner. I mean, they have just a regular stainless liner. This to me looks like this is a brass thumb stud and brass liners. Cause they're gold. Aluminum handle. And then you got Okay, and look at this. I mean, glass breaker, check that out, right? I mean, what a neat little, and it's a liner lock, which is not my favorite type of operating system, but it works. Um, four, six, eight, and 10 millimeter hex wrench. I think the biggest one will probably open those oxygen tank you know, the oxygen tanks that older people get or people who are on oxygen for any reason, they have to have that oxygen tank. I think that'll fit that. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I've seen them before, but I, I don't have one around, thank God, because I don't need one. Okay, so you can do tip down or tip up. Set for tip down, carry, which I don't care because I just keep it on the end table. Uh, and so you can flip that to tip up. How weird is that? Lanyard hole, okay. And it looks like it's brass lined. This backspacer, I'm assuming it's aluminum because I would imagine, why would they cut a piece of G10 to do that? But it's all possible. The blade's just a little over two and a half inches long. It's, it's not a very long blade. This is insane. I can't be taking this much time doing a review on this knife. 2.6 inches, something like that. Overall, six and a quarter, not counting the, the glass uh, breaker. Just a tad over with the glass breaker on it. Um, thickness, hell, uh, it's not even a half inch. It's a 16th shy of a half inch overall thickness. It's got jimping here. And here, um, I don't know. I'm mean, just, you know, the lockup's not overly done. It's it's just kind of where it needs to be. And I know it looks like a thin liner lock. And I'm really tired of people doing spine whack tests. Uh, you know, what the hell? Okay, I'm going to open a box. Oh my God, what if a Volkswagen falls on my knife and it and the lock fails and it, you know, come on, stop it. Stop it. It's a little pocket knife you're going to use for various tasks and that liner lock is strong enough to hang that blade out there without it collapsing real easy. I mean, you could throw 100 pounds on that son of a, son of a gun. Almost slipped up without it failing okay i just i'm just saying and like it's a mirror polished blade which really sucks in a way because uh wow i'm sure marking the hell up but i like it because it's shiny it's not really mirror it's just a really intense satin okay but um okay we got the measurements on it it's like three ounces it's like 2.9 something ounces so it's really light, uh, but it's really small, you know, so I guess it should be. But look at this. I mean, the action on this knife, and I see this was, I don't know. This is a used knife as far as I'm concerned. It was really, really sharp, so I don't think it was used much. But it didn't come in a package, in the original packaging. So, okay, so I don't have that. But it, it doesn't really look scarred up or anything. It looks pretty much in new condition. And I'm just, uh, I never, never, never intended to own a Sanren Moon Knife. I'm sorry, and I don't know why I don't like them. I guess I am stuck. I'm stuck on the king of budget knives, Ganzo. And especially with their arc lock. I mean, this knife is just 
so easy to open and close. Just, it's a nothing. It's a nothing. And this one's got carbon fiber. And you're talking 20 bucks. But this one's 12. Yeah. And you know what? This is, uh, you know, far be it from me to even contemplate using such a beautiful collector piece as this. So I, <laughs> I mean, it's like nuts. It's like, well, I'll carry this knife because I do. I carry this knife a lot. Okay. But I, I, when I'm out and about, I never really run into a reason for a reason to use this knife. Okay. When you carry it and you're running around doing whatever you're doing. I mean, most of the time you don't need to whip your knife out to do anything. But when you're at home, it's like, oh crap. Oh, here comes a box, UPS guy. You know, there's some letters and shit that comes in the mail every day. And so you go, yeah, you sit down and I don't want to grab this and use this. <laughs> it's almost too nice. I mean, for $20, it's like, ah, that's too nice. Can't use that one. Let's use this one. And so this little brother gets used and it's, I'm sitting there going, it's really smooth to deploy. This liner's easy and this just, I mean, it shuts, you know, it shuts real easy. I mean, I, I guess you can gravity flip it. It's pretty hard, but uh, I mean, it's, I like the design. I think the blade uh, geometry is just totally whack. It's, it's kind of cool. Um, I'm not sure, but I think I wouldn't mind seeing this in about a 3.8 inch blade and maybe make it into a flipper. <laughs> make a frame lock. Oh my God, I'm losing it. But it's, it's, it's really nice. I, um, blade stock is like 2.5 millimeters it's not quite three it's like 2.8 something like that so you know normally we're talking about blade stock that's like four millimeter thick and this is not okay now now but it's but for what it is because it's such a small blade and this thumb stud is really handy and it makes it ambidextrous you know, the pocket carry is not ambidextrous, but it is tip, tip up, tip down. You do have, uh, you do have uh, jimping on the back, so you get some traction. I don't know that you get a lot of traction out of this, but other than the adjustable wrench option, you know, it's a bottle opener, so you can do that as well. So, I mean, it's kind of a cool carry knife because you got an adjustable wrench, you got a bottle opener, you got a glass breaker. So, I mean, that's a lot of things you can't do with this. This is just a knife. Who would have thought just to make a knife a knife? When you could make it a glass breaker, an adjustable wrench, and a bottle opener. Jeez, who'd have thunk? Just saying. So the stop pin back here is pr pretty decent considering what it has to be, which it doesn't have to be a whole lot, right? But it's still, yeah, it's pretty stout. It seems to be pretty well put together. There's no real sharp edges. You got chamfering, you know, all the way around. Um, you know, and I've, I, I keep looking at this knife and I'll just sit back and kind of look at it and go, you know, you're kind of the ugly sister and the, you know, but you're doing all the work. You're like Cinderella, right? I mean, you're just, uh, you're the scrub maid and everybody else is out for the party. But you know what? This is, God, this is um, actually a good knife. And I've looked through a lot of the Sandrin Moo. I've got one or two others coming in, actually, because this one kind of changed my mind. So I got a couple coming in. I got a couple more of these dogs coming in and I'm going to do a review on these, but uh <sighs> proprietary pivot jesus mary and joseph i mean i i am really this thing came so cranked down i don't want to talk about it don't even want to talk about it had to go through hell and high water to try and back that damn pivot off to make this thing worth a crap now it flips open but who wants to make a flipper that costs 14 bucks i don't know i mean why didn't they put an axis lock in this thing and forget about it i don't know 
But we'll get to you later, buddy. We got some talking to do. This is well-behaved, unappreciated little brother. It really is. Wow. I don't know what I haven't said about it. Oh, 8 CR13 MOV, which of course is not the proudest, most exotic metal out there. But it's sure getting the job done. It's sharp. You know? It's well ground. Um, you know? So you know the length of the blade. You know the overall length. You know the width. You know about the jimping. You know about the liner lock. The action's really nice and easy. It's very sharp. Unusual type of grind on the blade. Chinese designer, God bless America. You know, you got a Chinese guy that's not knocking off some American thing, cloning it out, and that's okay. I mean, I don't care that they do the clones. If they want to do them, hell with it. I mean, you know, they got to make a living, and if it's legal, you know, so be it shit. <laughs> not like that doesn't happen in the U.S. of A. or anywhere else, you know, where they can make a buck and they can do it without being illegal. But in any case... So this is cool. I mean, you know, I think, uh, you know, it's a cool little design. It's got these little Torx head screws. You can pull this insert out. Why? I don't know. I mean, it's just part of the construction of the knife, though. But, you know, you can you can change the pocket clip. There's a lot of people just won't buy a knife if it's, if it's uh, tipped down. Doesn't matter to me. I'll carry them either way. But this one does give you the option. It's a nice tubed, you know... Uh, lanyard hole. I, I think they did some stuff to this. Okay, so I've read through the stuff um, and why are we doing this? Why is this here? You guys, this will give you something to comment about because whatever it is there is going to get cut. You know? So is that something where you run a piece of string through there if you want to chop it and he goes I don't know I don't know it's not wire cutter but it's gonna cut whatever goes in there it's running interference there's your lanyard hole what that hole is is something that you will know but I do not it's got brass liners uh, you know ambidextrous thumb stud it's it's nice I don't know. And they come in, uh, you know, they have one that's green. And then they have one that doesn't have the brass liners. It's stainless liner, so it's all silver. Uh, you know, they got some different renditions of this. It's really strange, but I went on YouTube to look at the reviews. And there's like Gadget Guy or something like this. Uh, uh, whatever, Gadget Fanatic or something does one. And he's pretty thorough. And... Then the next one was Russian. The next one was German. You know, the most watched. So, I mean, I, I didn't go down all the reviews, but they ain't a whole lot of them in English. But uh, we're, we're going to do, we're going to talk about these a little bit more in the future. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, the Enlon knives because Enlon uh, knives, um, this one was of interest to me we'll get into this later shut up don't do this yes i'm gonna okay because when i did the maker knife hmm does something look awful familiar yes it does and there was a viewer and thank you very much for push putting that out there because you know we all learn when you make comments in the comment section she the chicken or the egg, but I think this was the chicken, and I think this was the... Oh, I think this was the egg. Whatever. This was the first one, I think. And I think this was a, kind of a copy of that. Although, when it comes down to it, I mean... Oh, tch, hello. Yeah, of course. I'm going to do the titanium frame lock, you know, with the... Uh, oh, crap. This is either D2 or uh, N690. In any case, that wins. This one, no... I had to do some adjustments, about busted my nut to do it too, because it was a pain in the butt. 
And I'll tell you more about this pivot later. I got a guy, I think, working on a tool. Any case, so let's put all this crap away because it can never stay on target. It was going to be about the Sanran Moo. It was going to be about how nice this is to carry. It's light. It's easy. You can throw it in your pocket in a hot day. You're just wearing a pair of shorts. You don't want to put something in your pocket, you know, that weighs half of uh, the weight of a 56 Buick. You want something really nice and light. And this was really nice and light. I really like it. Um, and it's so utilitarian. If you really got into the shit, I mean, you could bust a window. Somebody, you know, in a car wreck or something needs to get out. I mean, it, you know, it does stuff. And, you know, you're going to an outdoor concert or something. You got a bottle opener. It's just nice. It's non-threatening, but it's extremely sharp. It's very inexpensive. This one, I can't remember the name of this. Uh... Gear Fast or something is the name of this place, something like that. But see there, and see this is not even the same. It looks like the same model, doesn't it? But it's a LTE LKR. Yeah, LTE LKR. But in in this description here, they're saying it's an LTX LKR T3. Ugh. Just they just drive me crazy. In any case, it's a 746. Aluminum alloy on the handle. That's why they can make them in green and whatever other color, you know. Wow, I don't know. I, I didn't want to like you, dude, but I'm liking you. And you're on my nightstand or my end table, and it's just uh it's really good. It's it's what I use. And it's so smooth to deploy. I mean, you ought to feel this. It's opening and closing. I don't know if somebody adjusted the pivot before I got it, because I haven't. But it's just, oh my God, it's just, oh, it's almost too kind of loosey feeling. But there's no blade play here, up or down or anything. It's just, there's no blade play. Not really. I mean, might be just a microscopic bit but and which means this could be tightened up a little bit because it is really kind of Lucy what a lousy shameful excuse to do a YouTube video what you run out of inventory or something is that why you're doing a Sanran Moo oh my god there is no end to my <laughs> uh, but no no, I'm doing it because I owe it to this knife because I use it so often. And I think I got to give you some kudos. I got to give you some kudos. It's actually embarrassing to say that this is a really good knife and it's very handy. And it really functions really well. God, Ugh. man, I got to drink a beer. I just feel like I'm, I, you know, this is the walk of shame almost <laughs> But it's, oh, jeez. Oh, my God. Mark, send me that carbon fiber lion spy. <laughs> Spider -co clone. I got I to gotta redeem myself after this. I'm going to get booed out of the state. But you know what? Try one yourself. I'm a telling you, Pilgrim. You try one of these. They... Feel good in the hand. I know they're kind of small and they ain't much of a handful, but God, they're sharp and they are really handy. Really handy little knife. I kind of like the little rescue shit that they put on these knives, you know? All the little doodads, really, as long as they kind of don't get in the way of the total function of the knife or the aesthetics. And they've done it here. It kind of, kind of adds to my fascination with it. All right. Okay. I'm done. I'm done. Thanks for hanging in. We'll actually have some more <laughs> distinguished guests on my YouTube channel upcoming in the future. But uh, hey, had to give a shout out to this little guy. He's working hard for his dinner, you know. He's, he's earning his keep. So hey, it's all good in the universe of knives. You know, there's no shame in liking a good knife that works good for you, and I don't care how much it costs. 
It's just, uh, if it works, it functions, it's got a decent design, it feels good in the hand, and it does what it's supposed to do, hey, it's all good. It's all good. Hey, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Take care.